Hi everyone, I'm Miss Brianna from the Hopewell Branch Library. Welcome to another episode of Biography Shorts for Kids. This month we are celebrating Women's History Month by highlighting famous women in history. Today I will be sharing the stories of three women who have received the Nobel Peace Prize. The Nobel Peace Prize is one of six awards given out each year in the memory of Alfred Nobel, the inventor of dynamite. The Nobel Prizes are given to outstanding people who have achieved something of greatest benefit to humankind. The awards are given in the six subject areas of physics, chemistry, medicine, literature, peace, and economics. Each year, the Nobel Peace Prize is awarded to individuals and organizations that work towards a more peaceful world. Since it was first awarded in 1901, the prize has been given to 17 women. If you would like a better understanding of the Nobel Peace Prize and of the many individuals who have devoted their lives to peace and making the world a more peaceful place, I highly recommend this book, Peace and Me, written by Ali Winter and illustrated by Mikael Afati. This collection of inspirational ideas about peace is based on the lives of Nobel Peace Prize laureates of the 20th and 21st centuries. This child-friendly exploration of what peace means to you and me is a perfect book for school-aged children and much of the information I'll present today I found in this book. So today we are going to look at three women who have won the Nobel Peace Prize. The first peacemaker we will look at today is Jane Addams. Jane Addams was born in 1860 in Cedarville, Illinois. She was a social worker who devoted her life to helping the poor and promoting world peace. In 1889, she and her friend Ellen Gates Starr founded Hull House to serve people in need in Chicago, Illinois. It was one of the first agencies of its kind in North America. Hull House was a place that was open to everyone at any time of day. Jane Addams and a group of women who lived at Hull House provided what the community needed such as childcare, English lessons, theater and music lessons, and help finding work. It grew to become a great cultural center with 13 buildings, a kindergarten, a playground, a public kitchen, and a public bathhouse. It also became a safe place where immigrants from the neighborhood could find the support and assistance they needed in a large city. Throughout her life, Jane wrote about many topics related to Hull House. She also played an important role in many local and national organizations that promote social causes. She worked to pass laws against child labor, to protect workers' rights, and to win women the right to vote. Jane became involved in the peace movement and together with other women spoke out against World War I. She continued this work and in 1919 founded the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. She was the group's first president. In 1931, she won a share of the Nobel Peace Prize for her work to rekindle the spirit of peace in her nation and the whole mankind. She was the first American woman awarded the prize. Let's look at these fabulous books that highlight her life. Dangerous Jane, written by Suzanne Slade and illustrated by Alice Rattery. Jane's heart ached for the world, but what could she do to stop a war? This energetic and inspiring picture book biography of activist Jane Addams focuses on the peace work that won her the Nobel Peace Prize. From the time she was a child, Jane's heart ached for others. At first, the focus of her efforts was on poverty and led to the creation of Hull House, the settlement house she built in Chicago. For 25 years, she helped people from different countries live in peace at Hull House. But when war broke out, Jane decided to take on the world and became a dangerous woman for the sake of peace. Suzanne Slade's powerful text written in free verse illuminates the life of this inspiring figure, while Alice Rattery's stunning illustrations bring Jane Addams and her world to life. The House That Jane Built, a story about Jane Addams, written by Tanya Lee Stone and illustrated by Katherine Brown. Ever since she was a little girl, Jane Addams hoped to help people in need. She wanted to create a place where people could find food, work, and community. In 1889, she chose a house in a rundown Chicago neighborhood and turned it into Hull House, a settlement home, soon adding a playground, kindergarten, and a public bath. By 1907, Hull House included 13 buildings, and by the early 1920s, more than 9,000 people visited Hull House each week. The dreams of a smart, caring girl had become a reality, and the lives of hundreds of thousands of people were transformed when they stepped into the house that Jane Addams built. The next peacemaker we will look at is Wangari Maathai. Wangari Maathai was a Kenyan politician and an environmentalist. This means she worked to protect the environment. Wangari was born in 1940 in a village in the Green Highlands of Kenya. At that time, girls in rural Kenya rarely went to school, but Wangari's parents sent her to school and she eventually attended college in the United States. 
When she returned to Kenya, she worked in veterinary medicine at the University of Nairobi, and she became the first woman in East and Central Africa to earn a PhD. After her studies, she returned to her village and found that all of the trees had been cut down. Deforestation was happening all over Kenya. Deforestation means trees are cut down so that the land could be used for other purposes like farming. In her village, after the trees were cut down, the ground was turning into a desert, and the local spring had dried up. Villagers had to walk for miles to find clean water and firewood. In 1976, Wangari founded the Green Belt Movement. This grassroots movement educated women all over Kenya on how to replant trees to fight deforestation. Since its beginning, the Green Belt Movement has assisted women in planting more than 51 million trees in Kenya. The trees help prevent soil erosion and filter the air and water. The trees also provide firewood and food and wood for shelters. In 2004, Wangari became the first African woman to receive the Nobel Peace Prize for her contribution to sustainable development, democracy, and peace. Here are some books that will tell you more about this remarkable woman. Wangari's Trees of Peace, a true story from Africa, written and illustrated by Jeanette Winter. As a young girl growing up in Kenya, Wangari was surrounded by trees. But years later, when she returns home, she is shocked to see whole forests being cut down, and she knows that soon all the trees will be destroyed. So Wangari decides to do something, and starts by planting nine seedlings in her own backyard, and as they grow, so do her plants. This true story of Wangari Matai, environmentalist and winner of the Nobel Peace Prize, is a shining example of how one woman's passion, vision, and determination inspired great change. This book is perfect for children in preschool through grade two. Planting the Trees of Kenya, the Story of Wangari Matai, written and illustrated by Claire A. Nabola. Wangari Matai, winner of the 2004 Nobel Peace Prize and founder of the Green Belt Movement, grew up in the highlands of Kenya, where fig trees cloaked the hills, fish filled the streams, and the people tended their bountiful gardens. But over many years, as more and more land was cleared, Kenya was transformed. When Wangari returned home from college in America, she found the village gardens dry, the people malnourished, and the trees gone. How could she alone bring back the trees and restore the gardens and the people? With glowing watercolor illustrations and lyrical prose, Claire Nabola tells the remarkable story of one woman's effort to change the fate of her land by teaching many to care for it. Mama Miti, written by Donna Jo Napoli and illustrated by Kadir Nelson. Through artful prose and beautiful illustrations, Donna Jo Napoli and Kadir Nelson tell the true story of Wangari Muta Matai, known as Mama Miti, who founded the Green Belt Movement, an African grassroots organization that has empowered many people to mobilize and combat deforestation, soil erosion, and environmental degradation. Wangari Muta Matai has changed Kenya tree by tree, and with each page turned, children will realize their own ability to positively impact the future. The last peacemaker we will look at today is Malala Yousafzai. Malala Yousafzai was born in Mangora, Pakistan in 1997. As a child, education was a big part of her family. Her father ran a school in the city and Malala would attend with him. In 2007, when Malala was 10 years old, a group called the Taliban took control of the Swat Valley where she lived. Quickly, girls were banned from attending school and many activities like dancing and watching TV were illegal. Malala was determined to go to school and she wanted to tell the world about what was happening in her village. At the age of 11, she began to blog for the BBC under a false name. She spoke publicly about how important it was for girls to go to school. After a few years, the Taliban was forced out of the valley. Malala was able to go back to school, but when she was 15, she was on the school bus returning from school when two members of the Taliban stopped the bus. They fired at Malala and she was seriously wounded. She made an incredible recovery and continued to speak out to the world. In 2014, at the age of 17, Malala, along with Indian children's rights activist Kailash Satyarthi, was named a Nobel Peace Prize winner. They won for their struggle against the suppression of children and young people and for the right of all children to education. Malala was the youngest person ever to receive the prize. Today, Malala continues her work with the Malala Fund to empower girls to achieve their potential and become confident and strong leaders in their own countries. There are many wonderful books that have been written about Malala Yousafzai. Here is a sample. Malala's Magic Pencil, written by Malala Yousafzai and illustrated by Kara Scott. Malala's first picture book will inspire young readers everywhere to find the magic all around them. As a child in Pakistan, Malala made a wish for a magic pencil. She would use it to make everyone happy. 
to erase the smell of garbage from her city, to sleep an extra hour in the morning. But as she grew older, Malala saw that there were more important things to wish for. She saw a world that needed fixing. And even if she never found a magic pencil, Malala realized that she could still work hard every day to make her wishes come true. This beautifully illustrated volume tells Malala's story for a younger audience and shows them the worldview that allowed Malala to hold on to hope even in the most difficult of times. Dear Malala, We Stand With You, written by Rosemary McCartney. An inspiring letter to Malala Yousafzai, winner of the 2014 Nobel Peace Prize, that is both a show of support and a call to action for girls around the world. Dear Malala, We Stand With You captures the impact Malala has had on girls from all walks of life. In powerfully simple language and stunning photographs, the struggles from poverty and violence faced by girls everywhere become a catalyst for change. The book includes an excerpt from Malala's UN speech and provides readers with ways they can help and participate. Malala's bravery has shown that one person and one voice is enough to change the world. As UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said, the terrorists are most afraid of the girl with a book. Malala, a hero for all. Written by Shana Corey and illustrated by Elizabeth Sales. The Step Forward Biography Reader shares the inspiring story of Malala Yousafzai, the youngest recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize. Even as a young girl in Pakistan, Malala spoke up about the importance of girls' education via speeches and a blog. Since the Taliban regime was intent on denying girls an education and silencing anyone who disagreed with their laws, this was very dangerous. Malala was shot, but she survived the attack, and it did not silence her. In fact, she spoke at the United Nations on her 16th birthday, just nine months after she was shot. Malala's resolve has only magnified her voice, delivering her message of human rights to millions of people. This Step 4 reader uses challenging vocabulary and short paragraphs to tell this exciting story for newly independent readers who read simple sentences with confidence. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about these amazing women who have worked hard to make our world a more peaceful place. If you wish to borrow any of the books I shared with you today, please visit our website at mcl.org. Here you can place a hold on the titles you're interested in and pick them up at the library when they are available. Thank you for watching today. I hope you'll join us for more biography shorts for kids. New videos will premiere each Tuesday on the library's YouTube channel. Bye!